Welcome to the second video in the series where I show you a super powerful technique for moving data around Excel using Excel VBA. Let's get back into the file. Nothing particularly exciting so far. All we've done is create this table. In this video, we're going to look at how to use VBA to interact with this table to make some of the magic happen. Let's get into it. We're gonna rebuild this code. This is the completed routine we've got here. We're going to rebuild this code in a brand new module. So let's go to insert module. And then we know that it's good practice to put option explicit at the top of the mo module. And while we're at it, let's begin a new routine. And let's just say move data. That's an informative name uh, for the routine. So what are we looking to do? Well, we know that this backend table is at the center of this routine. We've got to tell Excel where the backend table is. That sounds easy enough. We could just say, uh, oh yeah, engine two and this range, which is B6 to F7. Now, what's the problem with that? That will be a static reference. We're trying to move away from static reference to dynamic reference. A dynamic reference would mean if we put more data in here, then the same line of code would pick up this additional data, which means we could just make changes to the table and VBA would be able to handle that. Super powerful dynamic mechanism. How does it work? Well, you might have seen this before on the Tiger channel, so you might want to stop the video and try to do it yourself. But we're going to create um, a generic range variable here called Chris Cell. And then we're going to think about how we're going to reference this table first. We're going to use something called with, end with, just to minimize or reduce the amount of code that we have to use. So I'm saying with this sheet name, that means everything within this with end with construct, Excel will begin everything within that construct with sheets engine two that reduces the amount of code we need. And then we're gonna use the construct to select a range of cells. Now, what is it? You might want to start the video and guess. I call it range, 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 and then the starting point and the ending point of the range. Range, range, range. You can see I've said dot range here. So where is the beginning of the range? Uh, well, B6 is the beginning of the range. Then where is the end of the range? And you might say to me, we need one more range in here. Thinking about the end of the range, you might say, well, that's easy, Chris, you know, well, it's clearly F7, but that would be a static reference. We want a dynamic reference here. So yeah, let's use this super powerful construct, dot end Excel down, and then we're gonna need two brackets at the end. This construct, you might have seen it elsewhere in videos on the channel. This is saying to Excel, go to the end of the data until you get to an empty cell. And in effect, it means Excel is going to go to the end of our table, no matter how much data we've got there. For the time being, let's just delete this, this uh, data at the bottom there. And let's just see if we can select the table. It's quite difficult what we're trying to do. So let's do something easier first that's going to move us in that direction. Let's just try to select the table and let's test to see if, to see if it's dynamic. For completeness and to guarantee this code works regardless of our sheets, we do need these dots in here. So these dots means Excel will read sheets engine two dot range B6. That's the power of the with end with construct. So I'm gonna save the file, control S, and then I'm gonna step into the code using the F8 key on the Windows PC. You can also use debug and step into if you want to use the mouse clicks. We want to move away from the, uh, using the mouse, generally speaking. Hitting the F8 key, what's gonna happen now? I can see that this data has been selected. So that's cool. What happens if we add data underneath that? Let's just see what happens now. Again, stepping through the code, and we can see that the range has increased by one row. Let's do it one more time. Now it gets fun, you see, once you start playing with it and we can see we've got this dynamic mechanism. However many rows we have, as long as there's no gaps in the data, Excel is gonna work with whatever's there. Super powerful. As it is, however, it's not particularly useful. We're just selecting the table. We don't want Excel to select the table. We want to say to Excel, do something 
with all of the cells in this range. How are we going to do that? Well, do something with all, with all of the cells. That sounds like a repeated instruction, which means, which means we're going to use a loop. Okay, we're going to use a for next loop in this case and use the variable we declared at the beginning of the routine, our range variable. So for each Chris cell in, then I'm going to use an underscore and then just delete that empty line I had. So the underscore means Excel will continue on to the next line with reading the same line of code, if you like. It allows us to separate code across two lines. And then we need to close the loop just by saying next Chris cell. So this should set up a loop and we're saying to Excel, do, so, do something to each cell in, in this range. At the moment, Excel isn't doing, any, any, doing anything. So just for testing purposes, let's say message box Chris cell dot value. Okay, so what are we expecting to happen now? Excel is going to loop through these four cells and just tell us the value in the cell in a message box. So it should pop up project name, site name, data name, but we never quite know with Excel VBA. That's why it's fun, that's the beauty of it. So let's save the file, Control S, let's give it a test. F8 key, stepping through the code. And we've got the first cell here, telling us that object is required. Yep, this is because I forgot to delete the select method at the end there. So make sure you delete that, Control S, F8 key, stepping through the code. And then we've got project name, excellent, stepping through the code again, F8 key, site name, that makes sense. So we're expecting data name to come up and then one more time data name. And now if I step through the code again, you'll see we go to the end of the routine because we've got to the end of that data. So in this video, we've looked at how to combine VBA with the table to create a dynamic mechanism. What does it mean in a practical sense? It means we'll be able to add more data here. Whatever we add here will be included in our routine. Remember, our routine transfers data between sheets. Getting exciting, I hope you think. I'm always excited about code. See you in the next video.